And now after Q8200, the last remaining Q8000 series CPU is the Q8300. I actually noticed I also missed the Q9400, so I need to check that one later after this. So uh, yeah, best out of a few of these CPUs. Core-wise definitely seems good. The target range, at least in terms of FSP, is the same as on the Q8200. The highest validation will be a tough one as the highest validation is like 4.56 gigahertz at like 608 fsb i think that's uh, very close to the highest value i ever got with this motherboard so it might be out of reach but i will try my best depending on how the cpu scale scales of course so uh, yeah astro p45 x3 deluxe kimping cooling f1 dark cpu container with the pink thermal paste from thermal grizzly Kimping cooling north bridge pot on the north bridge itself. Two sticks of course a dominator GDX2 memory. NVIDIA 6500 GT with capture card for the monitor signal and C Sonic Prime 1300 watt platinum. I now reinstalled the Windows XP using my own one just to see if I can get the correct efficiency on the W Prime as that one was definitely behind with the Q8200. But yeah, let's see what happens. So. Uh, CPU wise probably around minus 100 north bridge We need to push the north bridge as well if we want to reach Stable performance of like 570 580 on the FSB and onwards Okay, the top scores are mostly held by GDX5, GDX X58 once again. Top score in W Prime 32 should be like 8.5 something. To check. Eight point five. 8.517, so we are almost got the top score. And that should be roughly the same frequency, 4.313. And something like this. A bit better, like five second improvement. Oh, says, no, three second improvement. That's the new top score in PyFast with the Q8300, 21.80. Previous top score by Obscure Paradox from the UK at 22.160. I think he was at like 588. Need to actually check. 58 something on the FSP. 
you know, 582, I think I'm at like 590. So yeah, I'd be higher. Okay, let's try this. Previous one is 11.828 GDXX58, 4.3. This is 11.609, easy rank one score. 200 milliseconds, something better than GDXX58. And okay, a few months after, so when I was running the uh, Q8300 results, originally I couldn't get the Superpipe 32 m because it always failed at around like loop 18, loop 15, something like this. Sometimes just uh, crash, like shutdown, memory or North Bridge related thing, weird issues whatsoever. And then I actually uh, uh, lost the motherboard I was using. So I couldn't continue and for some reason I couldn't find that same CPU so I used another one. You can see it from the VID, this CPU has 1.288. The uh, CPU I used for the other scores was 1.238. But doesn't really matter, even this one is definitely good. More limitations on the North Bridge than on the CPU. So uh, Superbike 32 m top score 10 minutes 24.594 seconds, previous top score by GDX. X58 from Canada, I think, at 10 minutes 25.313. But this one was definitely hard. Almost the same CPU frequency. I'm a tiny bit more, but his Gigabyte board, the model he's using, it has more memory multipliers. So he can actually run like 1800 plus on the memory 664 timings, but common rate too. This is uh, 1525, 553, 1548, common rate one. Very weird timings. I've never run TRD at uh, free, and I had to mess around with other things as well. This was definitely hard. I had to try hours after hours uh, for this score. Very difficult, and usually it fails at like loop 18. Every single time loop 18 or loop 15 uh, shut down. But usually now, most recent runs loop 18, not exact in round. And okay, after a few months, as now it's already early June of 2025, I finally managed to wrap up Q8300. And now pretty much all of the Q8000 series Yorkfield CPUs, apart from some validations, at least with the Q8300. Because very often with these Yorkfield lock, locked Yorkfield models, the top validations, as I've already explained on my channel before on, on these videos, they are held by gigabyte motherboards that can bug the CPU to disable one of the CPU dies on top of the CPU's PCB. That's the same method I used with the Q6600 when I ran the best CPU for 5.6 gigahertz. It's, it's not actually real. Q6600, it's uh, only one die, only one die being used and only one of the physical cores is actually enabled at the hardware level. So it's not like quad core at the hardware level, so it's not kind of like 100% uh, fair result if you ask me and that's what happens over here with these Yorkfield CPUs when comparing let's say the ASRock P45X3 Deluxe against the Gigabyte motherboard. So uh, the highest validation I managed to get was was it 4427 so 590 times 7.5 that gives me the rank 2 uh, validation with this CPU model so Q8300 all other top three, previous top three results were made on Gigabyte motherboard with two cores being uh, active, but that's almost certainly the bug at the hardware level. So the, you just wait for the lucky run, the lucky moment when the CPU disables half of the physical cores on its own during, uh, during uh, post-process 
and then it effectively becomes a dual core CPU and overclocking FSP becomes so much easier. That's what these guys are doing. Like when you see gigabyte boards running York fields at like 600 plus, 610 plus FSP, that's pretty much how it goes. So I couldn't get any higher than 590 plus, 595 definitely didn't want to go so uh, that's pretty much it but at least i managed to get most of the results already with the board that uh, got damaged i managed to get every single performance test uh, except 32m because the motherboard went bad during the 32m attempt i honestly feel now when comparing this board against that old one i think the old one was actually a bit better more like uh, consistent with very high memories higher maximum uh, FSP because I even saw 600 plus with that board I'm not like utmost 100% sure is it the board here could it be the CPU I'm not 100% sure but when I move on to the next models I might be using the another P45X3 Deluxe I managed to get during these past two months or so because uh, uh, this board became very flaky after 570 FSP when it comes to memory stability it was a lot worse in XP environment compared to the server 2003 I didn't have this with the other the older board that got damaged so I want to try the other one but uh, anyway so uh, W primes I managed to get like minor improvements over the previous rank one score I'm I don't remember who has all of the rank one scores before me with the CPU model. I think GDX X58 has all of the performance ones and then some guy from Iran, like Behchad, like I don't know how to pronounce his name, but guy from Iran, an, a very old score made in like uh, 2012, early 2010s at 608 FSP. So that's definitely the Gigabyte bug, the famous bug for Gigabyte motherboards. So, uh, W primes I only got like a minor improvement over the previous rank one scores like I think my best W prime 32 was like 8.421 and previous rank one score was like 8.5 something so like 0.1 something seconds faster 1024 m I had some efficiency is uh, issues so my run was only like two or three seconds better than the previous rank one score 1M, I think my best run was 11.609. I don't remember like out of my head as it's already like three months uh, ahead of time from when I ran those scores and currently when I'm filming this, hwbot.org is not working. So I think the previous best 1M was like uh, very high 11.6 something, like 11.68 or 9 or 11.7 something. PyFast, the best run was by Obscure Paradox, I think at like 2211, 22 point something, and my best run was 21.8. So definitely a good score if you ask me. And the hardest one of them all was the 32M. So uh, like one second improvement or so, but that's already a decent run considering how, how much like... Uh, how much issues I have from the memory because this board doesn't have that 5 to 8 ratio that the Gigabyte Mufferboard model has so I need to use a lower memory multiplier and memory really affects the performance it affects the performance a lot more than CPU performance so uh, I had to push the memory extremely tight to get the uh, required efficiency to uh, get the top score in 32M as well so I ran like 15 25 15 something with 553 timings sub timing super tight etc so that was the test i used most of most of my time with and the last one was the validation so a pretty happy rank 2 score and rank 1 score if we only calculate real quad core results at the hardware level i think but yeah that's pretty much it so all of the top scores will be uploaded to hardwarebot.org already by the time you are watching this video so please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you appreciate my work and efforts with these older platforms and cpus etc i still want to get all of the remaining locked york fields in the q9000 series lineup of cpus so we'll see what happens very very soon but yeah these are pretty much the results with the q8300 i already posted q8400 last autumn 
Q8200 very recently on my channel and here is the 8300 but yeah so hope you hopefully you enjoyed the video so thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one